This video was brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com YT. Hello developers and welcome to today's video tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to style React components. Oh yes. I'm going to be showing you four different ways to do that. Number one is going to be inline styling. Number two, we're going to use styled components. Number three, we're going to use CSS modules. And then number four, ooh, we're pushing it here, but it's going to be a good one. Tailwind CSS. I'm going to show you how to do that. All four of those coming right up. I'm not going to waste any time in this tutorial. We're going to be doing some live coding. So if you want to follow along, I'm here on CodePen. Otherwise, you're certainly welcome to use your local machine, get a Create React app going. So let's talk about that first method. Method number one, inline styling of React components. Now, if you just have a few things you want to tweak, this could be an ideal method. If you're familiar with HTML, you know it's possible to add that CSS inline. Same thing with React. We can add these inline styles to any React component we want to render. These styles are written as attributes and are passed to that element. Let's style our component right now with an inline style. So I have this extremely basic to do app right here, as you can see, looking pretty lonely with those styles. So I have this boilerplate and let's say we want to add some CSS styling to the div and to the H2. Let me code this out here and you can see exactly what is going on. Now, as I code this, you're going to notice a few things that are different here. If you're used to coding in just plain CSS, we have these curly braces, two of them. We have camel case. It's just like looking strange, right? If you've never used this in React, but let me explain what is going on here. So we have these two curly braces and what we are rendering is written in JSX. And for pure JavaScript expressions to be used in JSX, they have to be included in curly brackets. So the first curly bracket injects JavaScript into JSX. And then we have those inner curly brackets. And that is going to create an object literal because these styles are passed as object literals to the element. So the next thing to note here with the syntax is that the properties are separated by a comma. And that's because we're passing an object. And because it is a JavaScript attribute, the attributes are written in camel case and not separated by dashes. So again, I know this looks strange if you haven't done it before, but we have to write it this way because we are not in pure CSS land anymore. We are in the world of JavaScript. This is JavaScript's world and we have to play by their rules. Hence this very interesting syntax. So in this code, we just added a few properties to the elements we styled. Nothing serious, right? Like it, it's a little improvement, but what if we had quite a bit more of styles? What would we do? Well, we can still use inline styles, um, but we're going to add a modification. We're going to create object variables and then pass them to the elements. So let's do that right now. We create style object variables the same way we create JavaScript objects. And then the object is passed into the style attribute of the element we want to style. So instead of adding the styles in line directly, like we did just a few moments ago, we just pass the object variables. So let me code out here a few variables. We'll name this to do component. I'm going to add some styles here. And then I'm also going to create a header variable. And then we'll do an error message. So we created three object variables here to do component header and error message. And now we're going to pass these variables to the element instead of typing them directly. And I'm going to say div style. And then we're going to open up those curly brackets and we're going to put in our variable to do component. And then for the H2, I'll go ahead and put in that header. And as you can see, voila, our styles appear on our page. The next style I'd like to show you is styled components. Now with styled components, we can actually write CSS in our JavaScript file. That means you can use all the features of CSS, media queries, pseudo selectors, nesting, all that good stuff in JavaScript. 
So style components uses ES6's tagged template literals to style components. And so the mapping between the components and styles is removed. In other words, when you're defining your styles, you're actually creating a normal React component that has your styles attached to it. So using style components, we can actually create reusable components with styles. Now, before we can use style components, we actually need to install it. So go ahead and install that on NPM. If you want to do it on CodePen, you can actually install NPM packages right on CodePen. They make it really easy. You go up to this gear icon, type in the package I want, and bam, styled components. So we're going to use this package. I'm going to import it and then we can start using it right away. So we're going to create a styled component and then we'll see how to use it. We'll go ahead and create this const to do component we'll called the style.div. And then we're going to use that template literal, that, that tick right here. It's a very odd character. Um, hopefully you can see it. We're going to put in a background color. Go ahead and put in a width, min height, do a margin. And then we'll add a border box. So this is a component that can be used the same way as any React component. However, notice though, unlike the first example where we were using these brackets and camel case and um, commas and all that stuff, we're using pure CSS in a JavaScript file. Now this component can be used the same as any React component, but notice we're using pure CSS in a JavaScript file. The syntax is, in my opinion, just a lot cleaner. Let's go ahead and put this component to use. So going back to our to-do app, we're just gonna put to-do component on its own line, and then we'll just close that up down here. Now in this code, we use the style component we created, which is the to-do component, um, just like any other HTML element. The only difference is that it comes with its own predefined styles. And we can do the same for other parts of the component. Let's talk about the third way to style in React. This is a fun one. Also CSS modules. Now a CSS module is a CSS file where all the class names and animation names are scoped locally by default. This is an important distinction compared to scope globally because CSS class names and animation names are scoped, scoped globally by default. And this can lead to some serious conflicts in large style sheets. And so with CSS modules, CSS classes are only available within the component where they are used. In other words, they're locally scoped. So it's good stuff. A CSS module, basically a CSS file that is compiled. And when it's compiled, it produces two outputs. The first one is a modified version of input CSS with the renamed class names. And then the second one is a JavaScript object that maps the original CSS name with the renamed name. I will code this out to demonstrate this. Let's say we had a styles.css style sheet. We'll put in an error message class. And now when our CSS gets compiled with, you know, Browserify, Webpack, what have you, it's going to produce something like this. Now this JHYS, I just coded that there. It's just a random sample key I made up that is used to uniquely identify this class. So like I said earlier, it produces a JavaScript object and that can be imported into the React file and used. For example, the error message is going to be error message J H Y S. So let's see how we can use this in a react app. We're going to go import styles. And now once that gets compiled, we're going to have local scoping with our CSS module and all of those styles. So extremely useful, extremely practical. Finally, the fourth way to style your React apps, Tailwind CSS. Now for this example, CodePen wasn't really cutting it. So I'm over here on Code Sandbox. Now Tailwind CSS offers a different approach. No CSS needs to be written to style an application. Wait, what? That's right. Tailwind CSS uses utility classes for each CSS property that you can use directly in your HTML or 
JSX. Using Tailwind CSS in your React app to style CSS is probably the most labor intensive of all of these examples. So there's a few steps and libraries involved because you are going to be modifying the build process of the app to generate CSS bundles. And again, I'm over here on Code Sandbox. If you're using Create React App, you want to install these packages. And note that Tailwind related libraries are installed as dev packages. Now we have to install and configure something called Craco, that is Create React App Configuration. Now Create React App doesn't let you override the post CSS configuration natively. So we also need to install Craco. Once you get that installed, you want to update your package.json to use Craco instead of React scripts. This is an important step. So be sure to update that. Now we have to go create a Craco configuration file and add Tailwind CSS as a post CSS plugin. Again, very labor intensive process with Tailwind CSS, but the results can be absolutely stunning. Uh, Tailwind CSS it does have a lot more configuration options during setup. So if you wanna learn more, check out the docs, lots of information out there on the web. So next step, we need to set up our CSS baseline because Tailwind CSS uses multiple classes with relative values. It is important to set up the same CSS style base across all browsers. So we can just add the following code. We're going to add base. We're going to add components and then we are going to add utilities. We're ready to use Tailwind CSS classes in our project. We can now use CSS classes directly on our project. And if we want to go back to the classic to do component using Tailwind CSS, we would use the following syntax. Let's go down to this div, give it a class name, open up those quotes, BG gray 100 rounded XL and then P dash eight for our H2 class name. We're going to do text LG font semi bold. These classes are directly injected as text to the class name prop. And there is a complete reference to all the class names with states and responsive attributes that can be used. It might seem counterintuitive at first, but once you start working with Tailwind CSS, you may be very pleasantly surprised at its power. So there you have it, four ways to style a React component. All these methods are useful and depending on your project size, you can use whichever. Hope you learned a thing or two about styling React. And if you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment below. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.